In this lesson, I want to look at the various data movement and migration options we have available to get our data into and maybe out of Azure. Because many times we already have data. We have some data on premises. Now, depending on how we have that data, how it's used, how it's communicated to, and how we want to use it in the cloud, we have different options. Now, a very common type of data we often have on premises is I think about why a file shares. I have an SMB file share, and that file share is hosted on a Windows file server. Now, in Azure, our equivalent service would be Azure Files. In Azure Files, I can create a file share, and I can access via SMB. Now, I might have multiple file servers at different locations. And the most useful service that I can leverage here is Azure File Sync. And what I have here is the ability to create a sync group. So I create a sync group. I register the servers with the sync group. I believe I can have up to 100 of these server endpoints. I shall do this in green. So we have our server endpoints, which are Windows server-based file servers. So I can have up to 100 at time of recording. I can have one cloud endpoint. And I put these into this sync group. And now what this does is all of my SMB file shares, well, they synchronize to the file share in Azure. Now they are syncing to the Azure file share. They don't ever sync to each other. So it's all via this file share. But this now means, well, I have my data here. It's now got replicated to this Azure files base share. That I could integrate this with Azure AD Kerberos or Azure AD domain services. I have multiple options available to me. If this has a problem, hey, I can access this. It's also keeping in sync my other Windows-based SMB file servers. If I just want to move the data, hey, I set up Azure File Sync, then I can turn these off. Or maybe I just want to keep them available, and this is for resiliency purposes. Additionally, I can do something called cloud tiering. And what this says is I have a choice. Either when I reach a certain threshold of free space, I am running out, it can start offloading the least access data only to be on the Azure file share. It still has a basically a link to it. If I talk to this as a user, I still see the data. If I access it, it brings it back down. Or I could say, hey, if it's not been used for a certain amount of time, it's not been used for 60 days, just tear it off to the cloud as well. So this is a great solution if I want to move my data, if I want to just keep it synchronized for resiliency purposes, um, or I just want that overall solution to keep maybe other Windows-based file servers synchronized with each other. Now, there are other methods as well. Uh, maybe, remember, there's other types of storage in Azure. There's blob, there's files, there's database services. So another really useful tool we have is Azure Storage Explorer. So Azure Storage Explorer, this is a nice graphical tool. So in this tool, you can see, I can easily see all of my different storage accounts I might have available. I can go and look at my various blob containers. And from here, you'll notice, well, I can upload a folder I could upload specific files. I can also select content to download. So this is very useful for maybe one-off type interactions of putting some content in, bringing it down. I can also change the tier. Notice I can also interact with my file shares. I can do the same idea of uploading folders and files or downloading. And it also lets me interact with queues. I can add a message, dequeue a message, 
and also lets me interact with tables. I can add various key value pairs to the content of it. So Storage Explorer lets me really interactively hey, upload and download content. Now additionally, in the Azure portal, if I look at a storage account, you'll see this option of Storage Browser. And this is doing a very similar thing. Once again, I can go and look at my blob containers. I could go and select it. And notice I can upload. I have those same concepts. This is directly within the portal itself. So the Azure Storage Explorer and the Storage Browser, these are great for interacting interactively. I want a visual view. I'm dragging and dropping files and folders to interact with that. So we have the idea of Storage Explorer. Very useful for those ad hoc interactions where it's probably a smaller amount of data. So this is very much interactive. Now what about if I want to maybe automate? Maybe it's a very large scale, uh, maybe I want to do it as part of some unattended job. So then we have AZ Copy. So AZ Copy is really useful for automation scenarios. And AZ Copy can be used both to copy the data, but it can also be set up to sync. So hey, what's changed on my local or my target? And here's a powerful thing. Yes, it can copy from my local area to the cloud or vice versa, but it can also do kind of cloud to cloud. And when it does cloud to cloud in Azure, it's server side. The data does not copy down to my machine and back up again. It goes directly between the storage accounts in Azure. So it's gonna be very fast, very performant. But I can also use it to do things like, well, hey, um, I wanna be able to copy from AWS, uh, from GCP. So it gives me the ability to take data from AWS, from GCP and bring it into Azure Storage. So it's really useful for not just hey, data movements from on-premises to Azure or vice versa, but from other clouds and also between storage accounts I have. So this is a, a super useful utility for automation. What about if I wanna move virtual machines? So if I wanna use, for example, entire virtual machines, maybe databases, we have Azure Migrate. So Azure Migrate, yes, VM, database, it will actually go and do an investigation and assessment of the current usage, the current specification of that source workload. If it's a VM, it could be VMware, it could be Hyper-V, it could actually be a bare metal operating system, it doesn't even have to be a virtual machine. Assess it, recommend the right SKU to use in Azure, replicate it to Azure, and then it can cut over. For a database, does the same assessment, synchronization, and then I can do the cut over. So these are really powerful tools. So we have Azure File Sync, Storage Explorer, AZ Copy, and Azure Migrate. Now all of these tools, we really think of as online. The data copy, the interaction is happening over the network then there are also offline. Maybe I don't have the bandwidth available. Uh, maybe I don't want to, maybe it would take too long. And so from an offline perspective, you'll often hear about Azure Data Box. Now there are different versions of this. There's Azure Data Box Disk. So for Azure Data Box Disk, these are as the name suggests. I think it's between a one and five solid state disks get shipped to you. They're fully encrypted. They're currently eight terabytes each. And I just copy the data. So this is about importing into Azure. I cannot get data out of Azure with this. So they send me the disks, I copy my data, I ship them back, they bring it into my storage account. Oh, and there's other services that, that actually supports as well. And then there's just regular Azure data box. So that can be both import and export. This is an, a, a box. It's about 50 pounds. Um, it has 80 terabytes of data after the resiliency. 
and they ship me this box. I plug it into my network. I then copy to it using SMB or NFS. I then ship it back. And when I placed the order for this, I specified storage accounts that I wanted data to be able to go to. On the box when it arrives on premises, I'll see different shares that correspond to those storage accounts. And then when it goes back, they copy the data into those storage accounts that I specified. This just ships via regular kind of FedEx UPS. And then there is a data box heavy. So if this was, I think I said it was um, like 80 terabytes and it's 50 pounds, well the data box heavy is 770 terabytes, but it's 500 pounds. This ships via freight, it's this massive thing that will get rolled into your data center. But if I do have just a huge amount of data to move offline, I do that. It works exactly the same way. I'll see shares and storage account. I copy to it and then it ships back via freight and they bring it into my storage accounts. But obviously because it's shipping freight, there's longer times there. So we really have these different options for data movement. Offline is the various Azure data box. Azure data box, Azure data box heavy or Azure data box disk. And then online, hey, if it's SMB based, Azure File Sync is great for that. I can interactively use Storage Explorer. If I want to automate things or do synchronization, not just copies, we have AZ Copy. And then for OS based workloads, be it a VMware VM or Hyper V VM or bare metal OS, or for databases, and we have Azure Migrate. So those are some of the key uh, data movement and migration options available.